Hey viewers, today we will be doing a life science video and this video was made to explain something that I left out of another video on another channel because that's not a science channel. So what are we looking at here? We are looking at the photograph that um, kind of discovered the first positron and we are looking at this line. So all of the rest is basically garbage except for this. This is a lead plate. So a plate made of lead, it is very small. So that is why the particle can fly straight through it, but it will get slowed by it. So basically we need to know whether the particle uh, started here or started here uh, because it got generated on one side of this and it got destroyed on the other. And why it gets generated and such, I will not go into that. But the thing is, if we slow down a particle or anything really, it will turn easier. So for example, if you have a car that is going extremely fast, it will be very hard to turn it. But if you have a car that's going really slowly, you will be able to almost turn on the spot. So that is because the force of the wheels is actually limited. So if you try to turn a car too fast, so if you're going really fast and you try to turn too fast, you will actually just spin out of control. And that is because the force that your tires can actually contribute there is limited. Same as here, uh, the force on both sides of this wall, this, uh, this lead wall, uh, the force here is exactly equal to the force on the other side because it's determined by the magnetic field which is equal on both sides and the charge of the particle which is also equal on both sides. So if we draw a line here between the start and the end point on both sides we can see that the curvature here is much less than the curvature here. So basically this is more of a straight line than this. Which means that the particle is going faster here than here. And if we say that particles decelerate over time, so they go slower because they bump into things like this lead wall, then we can see that the particle got generated here with a high speed, then got slowed down by the wall and has a lower speed over here. And if we know the direction of the magnetic field, we can then determine the charge of the particle. So the particle is positively charged. We can see that from the fact that it's going from the bottom to the top with a curvature that's going to the left. So an electron coming from the same side and same direction would go like this. Okay, the curvature is not entirely correct, but the direction of the curvature is correct. So it would bend the other way because this one is negatively charged. And this one is positively charged. So now that we know that, now that we know it is positively charged, how do we determine the mass? Because we need to know that it's, an, it's a positron and not, for example, a proton. A second thing that we all know is that if you have a large mass, then you have difficulty turning. So basically what we're going to determine here is how big is the mass? And from that mass, we can actually see whether this is indeed an electron with a positive charge. So if something had a really big mass, so let's say a proton, which is also positively charged with the same charge as the positron, it would go like this, which means that even though it has some curvature, it is not nearly as much as the curvature in this uh, well, this particle, whatever it is. So we can see that the curvature on this particle is way bigger, which means it has a smaller mass than this one. And if we compare it to electrons, which of course curve the other way, but curve exactly the same, they would curve something like this. So they would go virtually straight and then after the plate they would curve the other way just like this one. So this would be an electron. And if we compare the two, then you can see that there's a big difference between this, part, uh, this particle, so the heavy particle, and, well, the light particle. 
from that we can determine the mass since we already had the charge which was positive we can determine that it is indeed a positron and um, yeah that's all we need to know to determine that this particle that got generated in the bottom here and annihilated in the top here was indeed a, a positron and we discovered our first positron yay hope you learned how to uh, detect your own positrons now and I will see you next time